You're listening to Metal Thunder Radio interviews. If you like what you hear, you can listen to the full shows by going to our website, www.metalthunderradio.com. We got tons of great music, videos, merchandise, and more. You can also check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash metalthunderradio. You can send us a message, submit your music for airplay, or just stop by and say hi. Either way, hope to hear from you soon. We got a whole bunch of cool shit going on tonight. Oh, we, we do. We do. And to start off the night right, yes. we have a special guest on the phone with us. And who is that? Mr. Matt Brunson from Crowbar. Matt, nice. what's going on? Hey, man. How you doing, bro? Good. How you doing? Great, man. We're just uh, actually at the Crowbar headquarters right now, rehearsing a little bit for the upcoming tour. But uh, everything's doing good, man. Oh, oh, awesome. Very oh, yeah. cool. Thanks so very much cool. for uh, taking the time to, to come on. We will not waste your time. We'll get right to it. And uh, yeah, we got the new uh, the new album, Cemetery in Black. It's your tenth album, I believe, correct? Yeah, it would be number ten. Number wow. ten. Twenty five years. So twenty five years and counting. Yeah, that that's is fucking fantastic. That's awesome. Amazing. So you guys have been real busy. I mean, you, you've done a couple of festivals. Uh, there was uh, Hellfest. I guess was the most recent one, correct? Yeah, we did. Uh, we did Hellfest. We've done. Uh, let's see. We did Sweden Rock. Um, we did. Uh, did a, a few other ones. I can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah, we're you know gearing up to do some more on this upcoming tour as well. So, yeah, nice. you got uh, looks like uh, Resurrection Fest in Spain, Brill Assault Fest. Actually, upcoming, I guess the the first one that would be coming up is the uh, This Is Hardcore, hardcore. Fest. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's in Philly, Philly, right? Yeah, at the uh, Electric Factory. It looks like that's uh, that runs from the twenty fourth to the twenty seventh. Uh, what yeah. what uh, what day do you guys play? Uh, we're gonna be doing the twenty fourth. Awesome! So the first day, kick ass. Now, yeah, I and then the next day we fl- we fly to uh, we fly to Frankfurt to start the uh, to start the tour. So wow, nice. And nice. I I saw some pictures you you guys were posting when you were on tour in Europe, and you were playing some massive shows over there. Oh yeah. What was what was the oh, what, yeah. what was the response you guys got? Oh, it was great, man. Uh, you know, any anywhere we go over there, we seem to do really well. I mean, even if it's. Uh, you know, on a uh, even if it's a smaller festival or just a bigger show that you know we're not really a part of the sound. You know, we we still do really well, and uh, you know it, I can't complain. I mean, the European fans are great for that. Yeah, we we hear that a lot from yeah. people oh, we yeah. talk talk to. Um, you, what is the difference? Like, because we do hear a lot that you know guys from the U.S. when they go over to Europe, it's it they get a huge response. But then in the U.S., it's smaller shows. Yeah. It's much more scaled down. What what do, what do you see as far as the difference between Europe and the U.S. fans? Well, I think the the thing is, is I mean, it's definitely the case. But you know, I think the the big thing is in the states. I mean, it's a big country, and there's a lot of a lot of stuff to choose from. You know, uh, there's a lot of tours going on all the time, and it's just one of those things where uh, you know, say that like we have this show in Philadelphia, people that are that are around that area, if they wanted to go, it's uh, you know, but if you live you know down in Louisiana, it'd be kind of a hike to get up to Philly. But if we're in we're playing a show in in Germany somewhere. You can come from Italy. You can come from France. It's not that bad, you know. Yeah, that's a really good yeah, point because yeah. the, and and these festivals over there, they're just embraced by all the metal fans. And like you said, when you, if you take like a you know a, a Vakin or something like that, people come from all over the place for that. And it's not just that Headbangers Open Air, uh, the the one that you guys are playing, right. uh, Bloodstock Open Air, which is uh, I believe your set is on Saturday, August 9th. It, you know, yeah, that's a great one too. That's another great festival we do. Yeah, and you get people like you said from all these different countries. They, you know, they'll make that that trip down there to uh, to see all the bands at once in 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 an environment with all the metal fans together. And uh, so oh, I, yeah. I could, and you don't really, I get, you don't really have these kinds of festivals in the United States, or at least not on that level. Yeah, you not a, not at that size. No. no way. Right. Right. No, not at all, man. And it's just it's just one of those things. I think the. It's getting better, but I think for the most part, the uh, the metal culture in, the, in this, you know, in the U.S., it's getting better. It's getting bigger again, but I mean, it, they're so hardcore, you know, in Europe. And that, the other thing, too, is that there's so much, like, uh, you know, radio rock and pop rock and just, you know, that kind of stuff here is uh, people seem to have short attention spans nowadays where it's, sure. you know, one, sure. you know, for six months, a band's the greatest thing in, in the world. And then six months later, they're on to the next one. Yeah, yeah. You know? especially in the U.S. That's a very yeah. U.S. type of thing, yeah, without a doubt. There's very few bands that kind of survive, you know, the test of time in, in the United States. But by far in, in Europe, once fans, the European fans, once they love somebody, they really stick and support that band. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and that's something yeah. that I'm hoping, you know, 
you, you start to see a little. It used to be that way in the U.S. I mean, also. It's, it's I mean look at David, here. look at David Hasselhoff. Come on, huh? There you yeah, go. David Hasselhoff's <laughs> huge. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Let's talk about the uh, the new album, Cemetery and Black. Cemetery Black. Uh, what? Okay. Uh, you know, where did you guys record it? Uh, I know you had to record it pretty quickly. You had to really kind of get this thing together really quick, correct? Yeah. Well, well basically, what happened was uh, we had like a like a small you know U.S. tour. I wouldn't even say U.S. It was basically just South right at the end of the year of. 2013 and uh they wanted the the label wanted the album you know they wanted it turned in like it was like had to have it turned in like valentine's day (laughs) so basically we got into the studio december 16th with a few songs written but nothing really arranged and we had from december 16th to february 14th to write and arrange 12 songs Wow! so you wrote arranged and recorded 12 songs in in two months two months Damn, <laughs> <laughs> and it's being received really well too. So I mean, this is yeah, you know, it's doing great. I mean, the the, the whole uh, we were, me and Kirk were talking about it not too long ago. Like the whole kind of pressure cooker vibe, it, it works for us, you know. Apparently, and now Kirk is the uh, the founding member. He's the guy that's the, the been in there since the beginning, since uh, for twenty five years now. Correct. Yeah, yeah, he's the the lone survivor. The lone survivor, <laughs> and this and this album predominantly, from what I understand, was was pretty much written by both of you guys. Yeah, we basically kind of split the duty. Um, it's, it's in the sense of like, you know, musically, uh, Kirk, Kirk's, you know, a lyric, I'm not a lyricist at all, but, uh, you know, a couple of the, uh, I, I came up with the names for a couple of the song titles, um, suggestions and things like that. And then the rest of it, the music was basically down the middle. Usually if there's a song with four riffs on it, two or, you know, two or his, two or mine, that kind of thing. And just whatever, but there's really no set rules. I mean, it, it, he's really, not too hung up on who writes what as long as there's good good product you know, oh absolutely out, you know absolutely and and you guys uh well you have jeff uh jeff golden in the band now playing bass for you guys and yeah yeah, and yeah. pat is now uh with down correct yeah he's doing he's doing down and he's got a couple other uh got some he's got like a cross punk band he does and uh you know, but his main thing is down. So, and, and it was and, like it was like almost like a trade because Kirk went from down to crowbar full time, and right. Pat went from crowbar to down. <laughs> and well, yeah, yeah, it was one of those swapping things. Swapping members, right? And and you got uh, you got Jeff, and I guess it was around October of of last year. And this would have been pretty close to the time that you were doing the album. So my guess is that he had to really, you know, buckle down, learn the set, get the songs together, and then record the album. It, it must have been a real whirlwind experience well, the, the for him. Thing, the thing was with with him is um, a lot of the for, Jeff Jeff played bass on a couple of songs on the album. Uh, Kirk did pretty much the rest of it. I even played bass on one of the songs. Um, just just for the fact that we we had to really make sure Jeff had the set. You know, we have a fourteen song set that we usually play fourteen fifteen songs, and. You know, we he got there in October and he came and tried out. And then, you know, after, you know, a little while we decided, you know, he was going to be the one that, you know, that got a stick, you know. And uh, after that, you know, he really had to focus on making sure all the set was tight. And uh, in the middle of that, you know, Kirk and I were writing songs. And we we just kind of, we had such a, uh, a workload on our hands. We didn't really, it would have taken us all that extra time to, you know, to show him all the stuff and have him record it. Whereas... We finish our guitar tracks. Whoever ended up writing the riffs usually is the one who's got the bass line happening. So right, right after we finish guitar tracks, we'd start recording the bass immediately the same yeah. night. And yeah. just get it done as fast as possible. Well, you guys were un- under such a time crunch. There really wasn't wasn't any time for anything else. It just had to, you had to get it done, get it out there, get it to the record company. And, uh, and yeah, then, pretty much. And is, isn't it amazing? A lot, of, a lot of albums that are done that way. Including, <coughs> including this one, sound great. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, it yeah, sounds like yeah. you, know, yeah, you sat there for months and wrote this album. You know, yeah. The, the, well, look, the thing is, you have to remember too that in that process of recording, we also had to mix it in the same amount of time, mix and master it. So that was another kind of like basically, as we were recording songs and they were done, we'd send them off, approve, you know, you know, hear mixes back and forth, approve them, and then when you know we we found something we could work with, we'd say, all right, you know. And it was just one of those things. We were basically doing everything as it was getting completed, you know. Oh yeah, I mean the uh, well, it's again, it must have just gone by so fast for you guys because you would just pretty much put your head down and, and went to work essentially. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we really didn't even get a chance to really listen to the album once we got the fi- we got the final mix before it was mastered before we sent it to Zeus, and uh, you know, that was the first time we really got to sit down and listen to it, you know, wow. which was kind of <laughs> weird, but it, we knew it was going to work. <laughs> Now you guys also played a uh, Maryland uh, Death Fest this year. 
Uh, yeah. And uh, I, I read, uh, I forget what website I was on, but I read about the, the fan uh, incident a on, st- on stage. Apparently, uh, some overzealous right, right. fan jumped up on stage and got out of hand and got thrown into Kurt or whatever. something like that. What happened with that? Well, it was just it was just an unfortunate, unfortunate incident all around. And it, it's basically, you know, it just boils down to one of those situations where, you know, things got out of hand really quickly. And yeah. that's, that's pretty much all it, all it is. And, you know, it, it's not that it's not anything more than just an isolated incident. Of you course. Know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it always happens when you get like a, a an overstimulated, alcohol fueled, overzealous fan. That tries to be a part of the show. Yeah, you know, and, that was a yeah. lot of adjectives. It really was. Yeah, wow. But it's true. <laughs> that's, that's a whole bunch of adjectives you just laid the, out there. But that's when things go wrong. It is. I mean, it's exactly. Know, a, well, lot, and, a, a lot. A lot of. Know, I guess you know. I don't want to you know go on about it too much. It's in the past. But I mean, the basic, the whole thing about it is, you know, if if you're not interrupting the show, then that's that's one thing. But right. when when the show gets interrupted, it it it's. It's, it's kind yeah. of a bad thing all around for everybody. Yeah. You're taking away from everything. Song, you know, it, it takes away the momentum. You know, Absolutely. The crowd, you know, takes away from the you know the people that are enjoying the show that, that didn't feel the need to do that. Right. You know? Yeah, it's got a flow to it, and it just broke up the flow, which you know sucks. Yeah. When I, so yeah. you guys are you do the the this is hardcore fest coming up in Philly, and then the European tour starts again, or the. Uh, yeah, yeah, we the very next day we fly, right we to, fly Germany, to Frankfurt, huh? Germany wow. to start the uh, start the third leg of the European run. That's awesome. Now, how long are you guys going to be over there for that? We're going to be over there from you know we fly on the twenty fifth and you lose a day going over there, so we'll be there the twenty sixth of July to August eleventh, and then we have an exact you know month off, and then we on September eleventh we start our U.S. tour. Uh, and that will be from September 11th to October 10th, and that's going to be us, uh, Arm for Apocalypse, uh, Havoc, Revocation, uh, and a, a Fit for an Autopsy. So it's going to be a five-band bill, and it's, it's going to be a lot, of, a lot of heavy music, you know, and that's, that's one of the things that I think will get, uh, you know, the packages like that is what's going to start bringing back the hardcore fans. Definitely, you know, in the States, yeah, you, definitely. You know, you got to have the killer tour packages. You know, it's it's a good thing. That, that, it's something like that. If more bands start getting on these really cool packages like this, oh, I agree, absolutely. The kind of thing to jumpstart the the scene, you know, for sure. So what after this is all done? What what are the plans for the rest of uh, 2014 after the tour? <laughs> probably to, probably to breathe a yeah, little bit, <laughs> take a nap. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, we've always we always have offers coming in, so we we'd like to you know we'd like to stay busy. It's cool to you know go out for a couple of weeks, you know, three weeks a month, come back, uh, have a couple of weeks off and then go back out again. And, you know, by this time, uh, in the next month or two, we'll already start booking in for the summer festivals next year. Right. Wow, so, nice. Wow. You know, I don't know what books out that far. Yeah. 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 They book out. I mean, they, we've already been kicking around ideas for the, for all of that already. So it's just one of those things where, you know, just constantly staying busy. And then I think, uh, I'm not, a hundred percent sure but i think at the end of the summer next year we're going to probably come back here and maybe start writing number 11 <laughs> nice 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 yeah well we don't want to keep you no rest keep for you the too wicked. long but we, we uh, heard we heard in the background yeah, yeah. i think they're getting ready to re- rehearse some more <laughs> but uh, yeah give us the uh the whole rundown and where we can you know where people can find out uh, cr- websites facebook throw it all out there whatever you want to plug throw it out there. well the the biggest thing for us is is uh facebook just check us out you know on, on facebook and uh check out our official page there um that'll that that's the biggest uh you know, uh, outlet for us, and it's the easiest way for everybody to keep uh, keep updated. Um, the the Twitter is uh, uh, Crowbar Rules, so you can check that out on Twitter. Excellent. All the uh, but basically, you know, it all it's all linked in, so all the Facebook and Twitter stuff all goes out at the same time. So um, that's uh, the way to stay up to date on the news for the band. Very cool. And and as we go, we're gonna go into. Uh the, the single you guys have out now, Walk With Knowledge Wisely, uh, anything you, you need you want to add about the song? Uh, well, I mean, it was just, it was another one of those kind of uh, on the cuff kind of things. Kurt called me on the phone and said, hey man, you know, I live right across the street from him. He said, hey man, come over, I got this riff. So we just, and he was like, uh, man, uh, I need a har- I need you to write a harmony for it. So without even hearing the riff, uh, he just told me what the, you know, the, it's a drop, drop tune song, so it's a drop A. 
they said, write me a harmony out of drop A. So I didn't have anything other than, than that to go on. So I just wrote a harmony. And when I brought it over there, it was in the exact same key of the song. So we knew we had a winner. So. Yeah, nice. it, work, it works well. It worked really out well. Drop it's, a. it's a really good wow. song. Cool. Well, we'll, we'll awesome. gonna, we're going to jump into that. Listen, thank you so much again for Thanks coming on with us tonight. Yeah, and, uh, no, no problem, man. Pleasure, pleasure. Spending some time with us. And yes. uh, yeah, well, w- when you're done with all the tours, we'd love to have you back on, talk about the tours, talk about the shows, and let us know how everything's going. And how Eleven's going. Oh, no, absolutely, man. Great. Cool. Absolutely. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. All right, man. Take it, bro. Later. Bye.